In this video, we'll be looking at some simple types of blackjack strategies. Now they're simple in that the rules are very simple. For example, this first one, the rule is simply stop when the total of your cards is equal to N or more. And there's simple rules like that. Now we're going to look at different variations on this rule. For example, we'll look at different values of N for this one. And we'll look at the probability of winning for each one. Now there's no math in this video. These probabilities are solely computer generated. We took 10,000 runs of blackjack using each of these strategies and found out the probability of winning under each of those strategies. We're going to compare three different umbrella strategies, this being the first, and look at which is the best exact case in each of the strategies and look at the uh, uh, best case across all three strategies. And then we'll compare them to basic strategy, which is the optimal kind of strategy you're supposed to use in blackjack to minimize the house's advantage. So let's go ahead and look at this. Now before we go into this, let's make one more note. This probability of winning is weighted, which simply means that it takes into account the fact that if you get blackjack on the first two cards you have, which means you get an ace and a 10 card, like a king, queen, jack, or 10, then you're going to get three to two payout, which means that well, in this case, we're putting one dollar down every single time. That's how this is working. If we get a blackjack on the very first two cards, we're going to get one point five dollars back. And that's going to be factored into the weighted probability. Otherwise, this probability is just kind of counting how many wins you get over how many times you played. OK, so now let's look at this strategy. This is a very simple strategy. So you're going to initially be dealt two cards. For example, let's say you're dealt this 10 and this 6. So you have 16. You're going to stop when your total is equal to some n. Now, this n is the variable factor here. If you have any n from 11 to 16 in this case, then you would be done because you have exceeded or equal to that number. But if you have anything from 17 to 20, for example, you would have to take another card until your total is exceeding that number. Now, the computer simulated probabilities tell us the exact chance of winning for each of these different n values. So let's see if you can find some kind of trend here. So the top one, this n equals 11, very, very low, is 43.8%. So then it's going up, it's going up, it's going down, down, up, down, down, down. Down. So we see that you definitely don't want to do something like 20. And this makes sense, right? If you're already at 20 or something less than 20, like 19, and you still need to take another card, that's your strategy. You're probably going to bust and you're probably going to lose. So that's why this is so low. But let's just see which is the optimal one out of all of these. It turns out the optimal one is this 46.1%, which is 13. So let's box that one in. This is our winner for this strategy, stopping when total is equal to N. So if you're using this, you might want to stop when you're at 13. So now let's look at a different strategy. The second strategy is you're going to hit if the dealer's card is less than or maybe greater than or equal to some variable n and your total is less than 17. So let's just explain this part first. This and your total is less than 17. This is simply just kind of to prevent busting because you don't want to do this. You don't want to hit every single time this is true because what if your total is like 21 or 20? Then you don't want to hit and just ruin your chances of winning. So we're kind of just setting at 17, just kind of, you know, just just a general number. OK, so now this table is telling us all the different values of n, which is, you know, the less than or greater than or equal to limit. And then this is a table for less than and this is greater than or equal to. And all these numbers tell us the probability of winning in each case. So we see a very general trend, which is for most numbers, we see that the greater than or equal to probability is greater than the less than probability. So we see that this 44.5 is greater than 42.4, 44.1 is greater than 42.2. But it's not always true. For example, we have two cases of the ace, because if we see the ace as the dealer's card, uh, we can either think of that ace as a 1 or an 11. So if we think of it as a 1, then it turns out these probabilities are actually exactly the same. But if we think of it as an 11, then actually we get the less than case winning. Uh, in this particular example. But anyway, if we look at all of these uh, numbers together, we see that the highest one is 45.2. So let's put a box around it and then see what that correlates to. So this is correlating to the strategy where n is equal to 6 and it's greater than or equal to, which means that hit if the dealer card is greater than or equal to 6 and your total is less than 17. So that's the winner out of all of these cases here. Now let's look at some crude strategies, which means they, even though the strategies 1 and 2 we just looked at are not very sophisticated, at least they take into account something about your own cards and maybe the dealer's card in this case. These crude strategies are just like a robot is playing. It's just going to do something a certain amount of the time, like probability-wise. It's not going to even look at its cards. So we have many different ones of these, and these are mostly for uh, kind of like a control. Like when you're doing an experiment, you want to control. We want to see if the probabilities we're getting here are actually any better than just some stupid robot that's just playing according to some rule without even looking at its cards. So for example, always stay. This in, uh, when we did the 10,000 runs of this, we never took a card ever. We just stayed with our initial cards. Under that regime, we win 42.4% of the time. 
So it turns out that actually this is the highest one. Let me do this in uh, black. This is actually the highest one out of all of these crude uh, strategies, which just shows you that this is the best you can do if you're just playing crudely. But anyway, let's look at the other ones. So these, uh, all these ones as they hit are all different kinds of hit regimes. So this is hitting one uh, an eighth of the time, so 12.5% of the time. So that means that 12.5% of the time you're going to hit one, regardless of what the cards even are on the field. And again, uh, this is 25% of the time, 50% of the time, 75% of the time. The general trend you see here is we have 41.4, 40. This is just dropping all the way down here. So the more chances we have to hit, the more pro the more likely we are to hit one card, the less likely we are to win uh, in the end. Now these hit with this uh, directional arrow is actually a different kind of hit. It's actually even more silly. It's basically that uh, you're going to have your two initial cards, and then you have a 25% chance of hitting. You take a card. Now again, you have a 25% chance of hitting. You're going to take a card. Whereas this was a hit one. You only hit once with this probability. This, you can keep hitting. It's just that every time you decide to hit or not, this is the chance that you're going to do it. So it's it's not very likely you're going to keep hitting over and over, over again, but there's a chance you'll hit more than once. So we see that uh, these are actually lower than th their counterparts. For example, hit one 25% is 40. Hit one uh, 25 hit continuous 25% is less than that hit 40 50% uh, is 32.7 whereas here 38.2 and hit 75 is just abysmal it's 22% this is I mean definitely it's a terrible strategy whereas the 75% here was like 35% uh, here and we see that always hit one so this is the opposite of always stay you're always going to hit one regardless of what your cards are gives you 32.7% which is still better than this continuous hitting of 75% but we see that the best you can do here is always Always staying. So now let's compare the three umbrella strategies. We see that the type one best one was 46.1% stand on 13s, uh, stand or stay. So uh, type two was 45.2%. That's when you have the dealer's card is greater than or equal to six, and of course yours is less than 17. You're going to hit. And we, the one we just looked at, the crude one, which is 42.4%, it's always staying. So we do see evidence that uh, we can do better than always staying. We can do better than the crude regimes we have here. Uh, and in fact, the best one out of these three is actually 46.1%, which is stand on 13. So this gives evidence that if you're just playing with your friends, you know, you're just playing commonly, you might want to just stand on 13s. Now that might seem very uh, silly to people who are playing with you because you're going to probably not take many cards. You, your, your initial total might very well be 13 or greater, and then you're just going to stay. But, uh, you know, probability-wise, computer simulation-wise, we did 10,000 trials, and 46.1% of the time, we're winning. Now, let's make a quick note. These are very simple strategies, and the point of showing them to you is that they're easy to remember. There is something called basic strategy in blackjack, and in fact, that's the rule of it. It's, it that's the name of it. It's called basic strategy, and this is uh, the table of, you know, it's a table I mentioned earlier of the rows are what your initial cards are, the columns are what the dealer's initial card you see is. It's going to tell you exactly whether you should stay or whether you should hit in every single case. And also there's things like splits and double downs and things like that. It's going to tell you exactly what you should do in each uh, each case. And the, these are based on probabilities, of course. So the optimal uh, percentage you can do in that, the optimal percentage would be 495 if you memorize that entire table and you're a serious player, you go to the casino, you play with your friends, and you memorize the entire table, the optimal way you can do is 49.5%. So how far are we off from that? How far are we off from this optimal? And notice, let's just note this optimal is still less than 50%. So the casino, of course, is still making money off you, even if you play optimally here. So how far is this 46.1 from this 49.5? So it's 3.4% percentage points off. So it's not too far off, but of course it is, it is off. This basic strategy is uh, something, if you're really serious, you should learn this. But if you're just playing with your friends, uh, you know, maybe stand on 13s.